Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for today's webinar, Delivering Value Through Predictive Analytics and Chemical Process Industries. I'm Haley Matisa with RapidMiner, and I'll be your moderator for today's session. I'm joined today by Dylan Cotter, our Director of Strategic Channels, and Ravendra and her sheet from our partners at PPT. They'll get started in just a few minutes, but first, a few quick housekeeping items for those on the line. Today's webinar is being recorded, and you'll receive a link to the on-demand version via email within one to two business days. You're free to share that link with colleagues who are not able to attend today's live session. Second, if you have any trouble with audio or video today, your best bet is to try logging out and logging back in, which should resolve the issue in most cases. Finally, we'll have a Q&A session at the end of today's presentation. Please feel free to ask questions at any time via the questions box on your screen. I'll now go ahead and pass it over to Dylan. Thanks, Haley, and welcome, everyone. Uh, we have a good agenda in store today, so here's what to expect. I'll cover Rapid Miner, and then we'll talk about uh, predictive an analytic use cases. I'll then turn it over to the PPT team, who will cover PPT, a very exciting use case around optimizing crack gas compressor loops and how they help with a million-dollar savings. And then we'll wrap it up for Q&A. So although we're focusing on one specific use case today around optimization, there are other use cases like supply chain optimization, demand forecasting, uh, customer segmentation and marketing insights, safety, and really the, it's not a question whether or not you can get value out of predictive analytics. It's sitting down and assessing the feasibility and prioritizing those use cases based on potential R&I, which we'll cover later in this cast. One of the things that will jump out at you is that RapidMiner does enable a broad set of team members who have a broad set of skill sets to really collaborate and contribute meaningfully to analytics. And so whether you're a data engineer, a business analyst, or a domain expert like the PPT team, it's really around how do you bring teams together and, and collaborate. And so that'll, that'll jump out at you today in today's cast. So RapidMiner is a covers the full end-to-end -end life cycle from data prep to machine learning, ultimately to deployment. And you'll see that again as well as the team goes through uh, the platform. So just a few things about RapidMiner. Um, you're not alone, a very strong user community across a broad, uh, a broad set of use cases. You'll find that uh, the analyst community is will be glad to talk to you. So Gartner and Forrester, Rapid Miner being recognized by Gartner for six consecutive years in their leaders quadrant. You'll find rich sources of information such as available in Katie Nuggets around data science and machine learning techniques. And then also uh, peer reviews from, from Gartner where uh, you know software products are rated, you'll find out what other users are saying. So a lot of information out there on Rapid Miner. Great, so with that, I'm gonna turn it over to uh, Ravinder from PPT, who's gonna take us through uh, more about PPT at a glance. Thank you, Dylan, for taking us and setting this tone for the discussion. Hello, everybody. To talk about process point technologies, we are a specialty service provider focused on cognitive analytics for chemical industries and hydrocarbon industries, essentially. We also have different verticals in terms of enterprise resource planning, robotic process automation, or application testings. We are a company in existence in this digital transformation business for 10 plus years, headquartered in Chicago with an offshore development center at India. We have an implementation experiences across 40 countries covering five continents, employing over 50 people across all the competencies, Coming to analytics team, we are 20 plus people in, involving data scientists, data analysts, CPA domain experts, and various other subject matter experts. Over the years, we have also forged a very good partnership with Oracle and a gold partner. And for data analytics, we have had a good collaboration and prospective collaboration with RapidMiner. Now coming to what PPT's differentiation. Proven cognitive analytics solutions in terms of productivity or productive maintenance, real-time anomaly detections, asset, asset management, as well as quality improvements. 
we back it up with a deep domain expertise. This domain expertise spanning across upstream oil and gas industries to stream refineries or downstream petrochemicals, polymers or chemical process industries and large fertilizers and power utility companies. In addition to this domain expertise as well as proven cognitive analytic solutions, we are technology agnostic approach and try to leverage the customer's investment in technology and software rather than we specifically uh, compelling customer to go for any investments. We deliver value out of the initiatives of industry four. Next. Coming to today's discussions, the predictive analytics. Before that, let's understand the challenges of traditional data analysis in CPIs. We have structured data coming from thousands and thousands of sensors, condition monitoring systems, and various unstructured data in the form of laboratory reports or third party chemical treatments. So this is what operation person is always bogged down with. Even though DCS system is there, it can only a transit point for data. Uh, so this structured data, even though it is passed through DCS or PLC or SCADA systems, they are all based on first principle approaches, which means they are for operations control and safety and asset protection systems. They are built on a very simple mechanistic models. And this other unstructured data that's coming is, has been coming from different sources, but it will be in a different silos. Is it really available on a real time basis for data analysis? Question mark. There are also limitations with respect to the design conditions and simulations where feed quality keeps changing all the time in a real life industry and creeping factors like fouling and corrosions building up, which the first principles or the offline simulations cannot help. This is the point where quality data collection from disaggregated data silos and convert into real time information and make it a proactive process response is the need of the hour. And data analytics or cognitive analytics bridges that gap. Few other things, the advantage why one must look at this cognitive analytics is in the traditional univariate control charts, they're all fought with human limitations are limitations on the human cognition when it becomes more than three or four simultaneous variables, it would be very difficult to make a insight out of it. So multivariate analysis is the way to contextualize large volume of data and multidimensional sets. Cognitive analytics exploits naturally occurring correlation structures within these dense data sets, builds cognition from data. So this is the fundamental tenet for the machine learning. And it provides predictive solutions on a real time basis. Having said this, it's imperative to understand how to, what is the approach to take this predictive analytics projects and rapidly implement them with a high return on investment use cases. At a broader level, what requires is to benchmark and prioritize, identify the need of this solid machine learning as a business case and establish center of excellence. From there, things starts building up to build and deploy initial set of use cases, integrate the whole system to data driven thinking and machine learning consumption and keep iterating it to continuously deploy and drive more and more machine learning use cases. So what are the examples are, which are the candidates for implementing this predictive analytics in any given manufacturing scenario? Are they feasible? How much value they bring in? These are the two questions. If we classify or kind of put into a quadrant in general chemical manufacturing industries or refineries or uh, hydrocarbon industries, 
some of the things which you can see <clears throat> at the top quadrant which can derive great value as well as feasible to implement for example reformer conditioning monitoring for run length extensions which is nothing but productivity improvements energy conservations through cracking furnace optimizations asu systems steam systems the creeping factors which generally kind of eat away all the business profits in terms of exchanger foulings and how best we can predict this which is a daunting task going by the first principles and use this predictive analytics for steam power and cooling water uh, cooling water systems so all these things are some of the typical examples one such example is how optimizing this crack gas compressor loop can be done through predictive analytics let's go through this case study and any of these anal predictive analytics case studies involve six steps that is right from definition okay, what is the problem statement we are going to address what is the objective and what is the solutions expected of it once that step is very well designed then it goes to successive other five steps involving data acquisition data modeling data engineering to data modeling and data analysis all these three processes are going to be iterative processes where data sciences subject matter experts and client work in combination to arrive at a proper solution to the problem statement and with the data analysis goes to the implementation stage and then the reports and benefits <clears throat> for the current case study let's understand the problem definition it's a client who is a global uh, petrochemical giant having ethylene manufacturing facilities across north america and few other continents and as we all know any ethylene manufacturing has to go through this compressor uh, furnaces and compressor network which is called the hot end of the plant in which where temperatures like 850 degree centigrade and 40 bar pressures will bring their own set of problems which over time leads into the lower efficiencies of the equipment and this crack gas compressor over the years has been consuming more and more of power and this is what the pain point the client had and client requested us can we tried all the things with the first principles and the traditional data analysis using technical services and process engineering capabilities and through this predictive analytics can you help us minimizing the power consumption and develop a golden fingerprint which is optimized of all these parameters which can help us to monitor it easily this had been the challenge given to us and we could work through it and rest of the steps of this project harshit will take care over to you harshit thanks ravi for an insight to how cognitive analytics helps chemical process industries and setting up the problem statement i'll take you forward for the next steps of our six step methodology and a second step is data acquisition so the problem statement helps to determine the data requirements for developing machine learning models and this step is guided by our smes so in this case we use real time sensor data from data historian then we aggregated and averaged it from 6 second interval to daily averages and tagged and mapped it to denote various process features and typically the uh, customer technical services team was constantly observing various operating parameters and they failed to analyze cdc efficiencies based on planned data from dcs mes and other systems and this sort of leads back to what ravi was talking about limitations of human cognition so to delve further into the data i would go through a rapid minor demo where i'll show you 
the data. So this is a typical screen of Rapid Miner, and uh, right here I have the final process that I've used. But in the interest of time, I would go through Turbo Prep and Auto Model. So in Turbo Prep, I'll initially load our data, and this is very simple. And you can see all the different variables that are there in our data set. We have date as our primary time variable, and then we have suction pressures and temperatures for all the five stages, cooling water temperatures, cooling water pressures, and compressor speed, and various splitter ratios, plunge ratios, steam extraction, ultra high pressure, high pressure, and various variables. So traditionally, we would go through this data, understand the various underlying constructs and how it is varying. Let me right now show you the charts feature that is there in Rapid Miner. So these uh, charts help us to build visualization right out of the box. And I want to show you the efficiency variation at various stages in this data set. There are a lot of different plots that you can make. And uh, in this particular example, I am going with a line plot. So what you see here is the first stage efficiency and its variation over time. Let me pull in the x-axis as state. Yeah. So right now what you see is the first stage efficiency and how it's varying over the entire time line. Second stage efficiency, third stage efficiency, fourth stage efficiency, and fifth stage efficiency. So it is very obvious to our human cognition that four-stage efficiency is varying the most, and based on standard deviations and mean and variance, we can see that four-stage efficiency is actually varying the most. And in the rest of this predictive analytics study, we would focus on four-stage efficiency. So now I'll jump to auto model, and I would consider the data of four-stage efficiency, and here we can build different kinds of models. I, since we want to predict force efficiency, I'll click on predict and I'll select force efficiency as my predictor variable. I don't want classification. Moving on, here we can select and deselect variables based on correlations. I would leave it as it is. And now we can develop various kinds of models. I would go with random forest and gradient boosted trees and extract data information would basically convert the date variable into dummy variables which is a very important feature that we would need so i'll go ahead and i'll run this models and you'll see how within seconds from having this data the models are being built and not only built they are optimized to our data and meanwhile the models are being executed i can Talk about the left-hand panel where you see for every model, you would have the model parameters, the weights, the simulator, the performance, then how optimal parameter optimization is there, the predictions, and how predictions are being varied over variables, and the prediction chart that helps us to compare the predictions between true and actual values. So you have seen that how Random Forest has been executed only in 20 seconds. It's RMSC is 2.70 and gradient boosted trees, which I'll call XG boost in the rest of this webinar, perform better than random forest. So let's delve into XG boost. Here the predictions show how the predictions are being implemented and the red shows where the negative correlations are there and the green source, how the positive correlations are there. When we talk about prediction chart, here we see on y-axis the predicted values and on x-axis the true values. The closer these points are to the red line, the better our model performance is. And we can see that most of the points are on red line or very near to red line. This shows that our model is 
very accurate. Jumping back to the slides, I'll talk about our next step that is data engineering. So in this case, we had time series data of four years that I showed you. And initially we chose port size efficiency as it had most variation. And we did feature engineering. And feature engineering could encompass a lot of steps. We use correlation plots to drop highly correlated variables. We use density and distribution plots to understand various variables. And then for columns like dates, we create dummy variables to extract trends and identify patterns on dates. Our next step is data modeling. And as Ravi was mentioning, data modeling, data engineering, and data analysis are very iterative steps. And we go back and forth between data analysis, data modeling, and data engineering. In this case, for EDA, we used principal component analysis and clustering. On the right-hand side, you can see how various principal components are explaining the percentage variance. and we can observe that first four principal components are explaining almost 80% of variation. And we can use these four principal components to identify constructs and understand how these variations are happening and how our variables are correlated with each other. Or we use clustering to see if for efficiencies, there's any clustering around bad efficiencies and good efficiencies. Then we developed regression models. I already showed you XG boost in the rapid minor demo. We also used BART. And on the right hand side, you can see the performance of BART. So BART is actually a fully Bayesian model. And it is non-parametric with a prior and likelihood. And BART performed better than XG boost in this particular case. So we would be using BART as a regression model. And the next step that was in our data modeling was design of experiments. So since we have identified the best regression model, our next goal from Project Deliverables was to identify the golden fingerprint envelope, which transcends to op optimum ranges for maximum efficiencies. To identify that, we built a factorial design of seven most important variables in our BART model. And this was done with three levels. And we simulated 6,500 plus experiments to see the underlying constructs. I would move to our second last step, that is data analysis. So from these statistical experiments and machine learning, uh, we finalize BART and DOE as a final predictive models. Our predictive accuracy was over 98%. We identified seven major variables or key process indicators out of 100 through variable importance. And we also identified the golden finger in envelope. And on the left-hand side, you can see the main interaction plot for four-stage efficiency. And on the right-hand side, you can see these seven KPIs, the optimum values, which would lead to maximum efficiency. So I would hand it over to Ravi to conclude this analytics case study. Over to you, Ravi. Thank you, Harshit. Uh, <clears throat> this is the power of predictive analytics using this cognitive analytics. As we earlier talked about the limitations which we have with respect to human cognition, where with advanced analytics, we could carve out seven major variables out of 100 different variables and also come into a golden fingerprint where that particular region of operation would help a customer to achieve their objectives. And now let's look at the benefits that has been achieved through this project. So the model developed is so informative and able to predict the major contribution contributors for this minimization of power. And KPAs were built on these seven major contributors. Not only that, the alerts for these KPAs also built for a continuous monitoring, whereas these alerts have been propagated across different hierarchical levels of the organization. 
and the higher efficiencies of stages were maintained by concentrating on these seven major efficient uh, major kpis where the they could the client could realize benefits in terms of optimizing this boiler feed water injection which is at it helps in reducing the temperature of the stages at the same time it have a penalty on the power and optimizing this wash oil which is a costly commodity to use for mitigation purposes so together with these seven major contributors they could work on this uh, mitigation benefits as well as reduce the power this power reduction has been to the tune of about five percent that is one megawatt equivalent which is at the rate of uh, 13 cents per unit is about a million dollar for the client this doesn't take into advantage take into consideration other advantages client realized in terms of boiler feed water and wash oil not only that by running this uh, compressor and exchanger loop efficiently the client could extend his turnaround maintenance schedule by six months six to eight months which is a 15 percent productivity improvement so this is an effort to showcase how predictive analytics can help go much beyond the traditional uh, analytic things now i hand it over to dilan for concluding the session great thank you robbie thank you harshit for the presentation today and also the audience for listening in to the session um so hopefully very informative I, if you like what you saw today and you want to learn more we encourage you to to reach out um and you know discuss maybe the feasibility of your use case if you've got one and glad to you know do a quick uh, ai assessment together um, you'll find our contact information here on the on the page so contact you know ravinda harshit or myself and glad to, to coordinate and discuss that with you so i think um, with that uh, Haley, do we have any questions um that have come up today to address yeah so we do have a, a question and i'll go ahead and open it to any others that might have any questions um so just a quick reminder for those on the line we are going to be sending a recording of today's presentation so if you want to take a look at the slides we'll be sending those within the next few business days um so go ahead and uh, ask your questions via that questions box there um and i'll go ahead and start asking the questions that uh, i see here uh, the first question I see is, does RapidMiner support integration with Jupyter Notebook? I think that's a question for you, Dylan. Uh, yeah, I could take that one. Um, so during during the demo from Heartsheet, you saw this notion of you know process operators, right, the little blocks. And so there is a operator to execute in Notebook that's available. You can also go ba uh, you know bidirectional backwards from a Notebook. In addition, if you're maybe more comfortable in R or you know using Python, there are other operators for that. Um, so glad to you know share more about that. But they, they do that is something we do support. Great, thanks, Dylan. Uh, this question here is for PVT, and it's how long does it take us to implement a project like this? Yes, number one, of course, each project will have its own dimensions, but generally looking at it some of the typical use cases which we talked about any of these predictive analytics problems related to cpa industries would take about at the most 12 weeks and certain cases they can also be implemented in about 10 weeks overall 10 to 12 weeks is all the time that's required to implement any of this uh, high value highly feasible uh, predictive analytics for cpis Great. Uh, another. Haley. Oh. Yeah, Haley. I just wanted to add something because it, it, that's a great question. I mean, PPT and uh, you know, one of the things we do is is help establish a center of excellence of an analytics. And so, you know, part of that, like Ravinder was saying, is you really it's stack ranking your projects, and then once you build efficiency around one use case, you're able to go back and you know take what you've learned and apply that to other use cases. So. Just wanted to add that note. Great, thanks, Dylan. Uh, another question I see here, uh, I believe this one's for you, Dylan, is what type of training or certifications do you guys offer? 
Yeah, that's that's a good question. It's pretty um, pretty easy to get started with Rapid Miner. So just go download Rapid Miner from the website. Um, there's at academy.rapidminer.com or is role-based training with videos of micro topics. So um, in addition to that, there are open certifications that are role-based. So if you're an engineer, there are certifications for you. Um, if you're a data scientist, that are you know, there's certifications for you in training. And I'll throw out that, you know, PPT being a partner, uh, their team is, is certified and obviously very competent in Rapid Miner, as you saw in today's webcast. Thanks, Dylan. So one question I see here, um, this person is asking, uh, what would it take from our side as a customer to uh, do a project like this? Uh, fine, I'll be taking this question. Yes, from the customer side, what is required is a clear problem statement and a clear expectation from the predictive analytics or the cognitive analytics or data sciences domain. So once this is done, then uh, Rapid Miner as well as Process Point team will get into it and looking at the problem in hand, what is the type of sensor data that is required that would be discussed and then it goes into the acquiring those data and do the data modeling, data analysis. At that point of data analysis where preliminary models are developed, we would be requiring few hours of customers, uh, mainly the decision makers and people, uh, the SMEs, to discuss about our insights that we have developed through data sciences and their validation of it and kind of it's an iterative process from then onwards we will be tuning up the model overall in the process of 12 weeks of any implementations one to two days in terms of initial problem definition and taking us through the plant operations at about eighth week about validating the preliminary model and in the 10th or 12th week about validating the final report. So from the customer point of view, it is the sensor data we are after and this clear problem definitions and reviewing of the models which we develop. It would be in terms of few hours rather than anything more than that. Hope it answers the question. Yes, thanks Ravindra. Uh, it looks like we're just about time here, so if we weren't able to address your question here on the line, we will make sure to follow up with you via email within the next few business days. So uh, thanks again, Dylan. Thanks again to our partners at PBT, and thanks everyone for joining us. Thanks, all.